guys, and welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad that you're here. Today we are making a bunch of freezer meals before baby. These ones are the breakfast edition and I cannot wait to show you them. They're some of the ones that I am most excited about with these freezer meals that are all going into my freezer, which would be self-explanatory when it says freezer meals, right? If you guys like these kinds of videos, make sure you subscribe down below and give it a big thumbs up. I think this ended up making 39 free, uh, breakfast freezer meals. Obviously that's gonna depend on how many we eat that day, but I feel well prepared and I can't wait to show you these recipes. Let's go into it. So the first thing we are going to be getting started with are some bagel breakfast sandwiches and I am so excited for these. I am making homemade bagels. You do not have to make homemade bagels. I just like to make sourdough. So I made sourdough bagels. They are actually cooking right now in the oven. They have seven minutes left. I've got some sausage going back on the stove right here. And I think we're also gonna add in some egg and probably vegan cheese. I'm not a huge fan of vegan cheese to be honest with you, but I'm dairy free. So <laughs> if you don't have to use vegan cheese, don't. I would definitely skip that. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing, well actually while my bagels are cooking, is cooking up some breakfast sausage that are already in rounds. I might press them down just a little bit as they get cooking, only because my bagels are bigger than this and I want my sausage to go as far around the bagel as possible. Did you want me to be a bug? A bug? Sure. Yeah. I'm gonna flip these guys, oh, perfect. And try and squeeze them down a little bit. They're shrinking as they cook, which I totally expected. A bug? Look at that nice caramelization. I probably left these for about four minutes on one side. I'll try and do the same for the other. You'll have to ignore my messy counter. I have quite a few things going on here at once. These are ciabatta bread rolls that are for another freezer meal. But I'm gonna crack about eight to 10 eggs in here and then just scramble them up. And I'm honestly not sure if I have a big bowl, but it was either this one or an absolutely massive one. Spoiler alert, the bowl ended up being big enough, but like literally just barely. <laughs> I actually love watching people crack eggs like whenever I'm watching these like homemaking videos. It's just so satisfying to see it go by so quickly. So hopefully you guys feel the same way. I think our sausage are about done too. So everything's done at like one time. <laughs> We're gonna pull out bagels. They got a little more brown than my liking, but that's okay. We're gonna get these all whisked up and that would be legos falling over from the wind some of these got a little dark i'm gonna do some garlic powder in these eggs i know honey it's not that yes in just a minute do you think you can put on your own cream cheese I'm skeptical of how this is going to work, but right to the same pan, we're just gonna add in our eggs. Might have been too much grease, but I'm not really sure. I also don't want them to stick. I'm not too worried about the brown stuff. That's just fond from the sausage. Good flavor. I'm kind of just initially scrambling them a little bit, and then I'm gonna let them set and kind of bake them almost like a frittata, and then we'll put them into our individual bagels. I think our bagels are cool enough to handle now, so I'm gonna start just slicing them in half. They got a little dark on the outside, but honestly, the insides are super soft. Nothing like homemade bread. I wish you could smell this. <clears throat> and like all my seasoning came off, but that's okay. We will survive. Do you guys need a drink? The kids are eating their breakfast outside. It's kind of like brunch because we're at almost 11 o'clock right now. This is the juice we like. It's 100% cherry juice. Yep, here you go. Here, take it out with your bit. Share it with Sissy. Got it. <laughs> he said, got it. <laughs> Sometimes I also just go ahead and mix in coconut water with it if I'm trying to stretch the juice. If I wanted the seasoning to stick on here, and I knew this when I was doing it, even though the recipe did not say it, I should have done an egg wash. But again, that's okay. Just in case you wanna make your own homemade bagels, <laughs> if you want the seasoning to actually stick and egg wash is what you need. I'm so excited to be getting these done. Freezer meals are a huge to-do on my list right now 
of things that still need to be done before the baby comes. Actually, I have quite a few things that need to be done before the baby comes, to be honest with you. I don't know, I guess I just feel like I have this like unlimited amount of time. And I really don't. I have about three weeks. I went on my due date with our second, and then I went at 39 and five with our first. I'm expecting to go around a similar time frame with this one, but I'm glad to be getting these freezer meals done because this is like one of the most important things you can do for yourself, at least in my world, for when your baby comes. Okay, here is our little station set up here. We have the homemade everything bagels. I did this just like cheddar slices, some soft scrambled eggs and sausage. Let's make these up. I think I'll do egg on the bottom. I don't really know. I tried to keep these eggs in like larger, what is that, like curds? So that I could kind of spread them out. Sausage, I guess I should have opened that. I'm not a huge cheese fan, I gotta be honest. But I think it's gonna hold it together when it cooks. That's why I felt like I needed to do it. I thought I was gonna wrap them after, but I think I'm gonna wrap them right now. Let me grab some foil. Let's do a little test run with how big. Also, alternatively, you could definitely do this in plastic wrap, but I just don't, I have not been to that store yet. So we're gonna wrap them in foil. I think it looks good. Nice little breakfast sandwich. I mean, what about my bagel? Okay, can you give me one second to finish these real quick? And then I'll get you more. I don't her bagel, I can't eat it. Oh, sure. Remember when I said that watching people crack eggs was so satisfying to see it go by so quickly? It's the same way with these assembly line type of things when people are making like freezer meals and stuff like that. Um, but I have not tried these yet from the freezer. We did end up eating a couple of these that day just as like a lunch and oh my goodness, they were so good. I didn't even end up having them on the everything bagels, but I bet the everything bagel seasoning is going to make it so much better. And surprisingly enough, I did end up having one of the bagels that morning with a slice of that Violife cheese. Is that what I bought? I'm pretty sure it's the Violife cheese. It's not a brand that I regularly use for vegan cheese. I actually have mainly stopped eating vegan cheese because I just don't really love the flavor that it gives. But actually, these were really just like cheddar, like it says on the package. And they were pretty good. They did add like a nice little saltiness to the bagel. And I feel like it was kind of imperative to have it. They melt, but it does take them a little bit longer. But if you can get them to melt, oh my gosh, it was so good. Such a treat. Daddy, Mommy. Mama. Yeah? Mommy. Mommy. Mama. Mama. Yeah? Mommy. Mama. Yeah? Mama. 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 Okay, so I have two bags of these, about four of them fit in each bag. I just always put the date, what it is, um, and then reheat in the oven in foil for 15 minutes at 350. I'm not sure if that's really how I'll reheat these. I could always take them out and like put them in a wet paper towel and put them in the microwave if I really needed to, but I'm wondering if like the cheese will get all melty and gooey in there if I do it in the foil in the oven. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna throw these two bags into the freezer. Our recipe that we are starting out with now are breakfast burritos. So let's just get right into it. The first thing that I'm doing for this recipe is we are going to take these potato puffs, AKA tater tots, spread these all out on our baking sheet and air fry them. I don't know, until they're crispy. I want some nice crispy tots, you know what I mean? Let's see, 18 to 22 minutes, so probably about 20 minutes. not that much in there. So I am putting my tortillas on here. I've got my cast iron heated up to like a low medium heat and I'm really only, I'm not wanting them to get brown at all. So I'm gonna flip them pretty quickly here once they just start getting soft and malleable. The brand that I'm using is the Siete Alma Flour Tortillas. I get the big bags at Costco. If you are corn free, we're making this for someone who's corn free. So we're just trying to make them malleable. You always wanna heat these siete ones before you use them. Look at those tots. Those are perfect. We're taking those guys out. 
Oh my goodness, yes. I don't know what these, that must have just been crumbs from the bag, but oh my gosh, they're so crispy. Next up, we are taking some fully cooked bacon. If you saw my Costco haul, you saw where I said, I got the fully cooked bacon to make it like a shorter shortcut. And it does make it a shortcut. Like I could just add these in here just like this, but I want them a little bit crisper than they come out of the bag. They just come out really floppy. You can microwave them, but for some reason, I, mean, I think it just must be my microwave. It doesn't get them, it doesn't do anything to them. It, they just are soft. So, and I don't mind soft bacon. I just want like a little bit of crunch. So I'm actually gonna add them to my heated up cast iron back here. And I mean, I'm talking for like, I don't know, less than three minutes or something like that. It's gonna be very short, but I'm gonna make sure I have two pieces of bacon at least per tortilla. Okay, I think I've used all of this bag. My family has actually really liked the fully cooked bacon because it doesn't take as long to cook in the morning. I mean, you could literally microwave it for one minute and it would be fine. It's just for some reason, I think we just have like a too small of a microwave to make it work, but it has been nice and quick. I'm usually using my cast iron pan in the morning anyway, so it's already heated up. So it's kind of like no big deal, you know? Oh. You gotta keep that bacon under lock and key. You know what I mean? I'm going to go ahead and flip some of these that are starting to get foamy on the top. But this leftover bacon grease that's gonna be in our pan is actually going to be perfect to add some extra flavor to our scrambled eggs that we're gonna be making as well. So I'm just gonna leave it in there. Let's see, got a little crispy on that one. We will survive. But I'm just telling you, these take like, literally they've been on here for like two minutes. Next up, we are cracking 18 eggs. I'm trying to decide if I really need 18, but I'm going to try and make 18 of these. I don't think each one's gonna need an entire egg, but if I can make more, I would love to make more. The breakfast burritos that I had last time were awesome to reheat. Like they were just, I was sad when they were gone. And with these, I am going to be eating at least two at a time. Probably two for myself, but then like, I usually have a helper who wants to eat with me and she could probably eat an entire one by herself. So the whole point of these freezer meals is not just for me, it's for the fam too. It's another fast paced egg <laughs> video. Um, I think I actually only did, ended up doing 16 eggs. I had 18 eggs here, but I didn't want to use all of them on this recipe just because I couldn't get to the store for the next couple of days. And I was so glad that I did that. I actually did not need more than 16 eggs. And no, every tortilla did not need a full egg. I'm sure some of you guys were probably yelling through the screen like, girl, no, those are like taco sized shells. You do not need a full egg with two pieces of bacon and tater tots in there. <laughs> You guys will see that a little bit later in the video, but let me tell you, these eggs were so good. Every time I've been cooking them in like sausage grease or bacon grease, the flavor is just spectacular. Into our pan we go. I'm just over very, very low heat right now. And my oil in there is just the bacon grease. And then we're just gonna start moving it all towards the middle. I happen to also be making a batch of brownies right now just because pregnancy cravings <laughs> and smelling brownies but seeing eggs is kind of giving me a really weird, <laughs> a really weird taste in my mouth. Super low heat is the key and I'm gonna just softly scramble them which means I'm not cooking them to a hard scramble. I am going to be reheating these in the microwave, right? So that's gonna help the egg but I also just don't like super tough scrambled eggs, but they will not be raw or runny by any means. I really have been enjoying cooking our eggs the, this way. I usually do our eggs like over medium and I do still eat runny yolks while I'm pregnant. Um, I actually didn't even know about that rule until like the end of this pregnancy, my third pregnancy. So yes, I have eaten them like that, but these scrambled eggs have been so soft and so fluffy. Here's how we've got this going. So I've got my tortillas, eggs. I don't know why they're all so spread apart, but tater tots for hash browns and then bacon. And we're just gonna make like an assembly line and get these guys going. Lay down a couple hash browns. 
Might kind of smush them just so they're easier to fold in. I guess I'm gonna be using my clean hands for this. Ooh, maybe not, that's hot, oh gosh. I want a good amount of stuff on here, but not too big that we can't roll it up. I think I'm only gonna be able to fit one piece of bacon, yeah. Might need to crumble it a little bit to make it easier. These tortillas are pretty fragile. Listen, we're learning together here, okay? Yeah, see, that was too much. I'm folding it up. It'll just be a little surprise for me whenever I open it up. Oh my gosh, look how cute and tiny that is. Now, when I go to make these, I plan on either, you could throw them in the oven to heat them up right in the tin foil, or put them in the microwave in like a wet paper towel for like a minute or two. I'm not really sure. I kind of, it's gonna be a trial and error. Those will be my main two ways of making it. For sauces and stuff, I plan on either doing like salsa with this, maybe putting some avocado for some nice fat, or just doing a hot sauce. It'll just kind of depend on what I want that day. Just from looking at this video, would you guys rather have breakfast burritos or would you rather have bagel breakfast sandwiches? I would love to know down in the comments below. I have some leftover ingredients, so I'm making a few more, but this is how I'm going to store them. I ended up with 23 of them, so how I'll store them is just in their tin foil. Obviously, don't microwave them in their tin foil. I'm pretty sure I said that, but I can't remember. And then as many as, them, as I can fit into this Ziploc, just for extra freezer protection, will be good. And I think that's gonna be it for this bag. I wasn't sure if I'd need two bags. I thought so, but I didn't wanna waste. It has taken everything in me to not already crack into these. I have not had the baby yet at the time of this voiceover, and I'm so excited for these. That was so easy and simple. Mm -hmm. Literally like a 30 minute process. Alrighty you guys, so the last recipe that I'm going to make is actually going to be a French toast bake with some homemade sourdough bread. I have, I mean these kind of make like one loaf, right? <laughs> this is the freshest loaf that I just made and this is the end of one that's kind of getting a little stale. So we're gonna cut this bread up into one inch cubes. But from the recipe online, this recipe has a five star rating from, I think it's like over a thousand or 2000 people, something like that. So we're gonna get started. It looks really simple. I'm gonna bake mine all the way through and then cut it into pieces so that I can reheat individual like pieces of this French toast bake instead of having to bake the whole thing at once. Watching myself cut this bread gives me a little bit of anxiety <laughs> only because I have sliced through my finger. Well, almost all the way through, but not really. I'm kind of being a little bit dramatic, but with a serrated knife while cutting a sourdough loaf. And oh my gosh, the healing on that was very painful and took a long time. It was on my first finger and I still have the scar and I still have no feeling there. And that was probably... I don't know, close to like six to eight months ago. Anyway, you're just kind of cutting these lengthwise and then cutting them the other way to make cubes. It's super easy. So our bread is in like one inch cubes or just what I assumed would look like one inch cubes. And this needs to soak in the egg mixture either overnight or for at least four hours. So I'm gonna make up the egg mix. Hang on, buddy. I'm gonna make up the egg mixture really quickly. And apparently that's all I had to say on that because for some reason I cut out whatever else I said. I probably was just droning on. So I think it, this recipe called for eight eggs. I'm going to have the recipes linked down below. And if you guys watch my other freezer meal videos that I have just come out with for this baby or even any of the past freezer meal videos that I will also have linked below that I did for our second baby, um, I have as many of the recipes as possible linked below. Now in this video, this is pretty much the only formal recipe that I have followed. The rest of it is just kind of up to you and like your preferences, but I think that's pretty self-explanatory and they're pretty easy to replicate. Um, and the only hardest part about the sourdough bagels is making your own bagels, which the, that's not even very hard but I will leave the recipe for those sourdough bagels down below. But we are making the French toast right here. And I honestly was not sure if this was going to be too much egg in this egg bake. Um, 
because somebody had commented on the recipe and was like, hey, I have a lot like left over in my bowl after even after soaking it overnight. What should I do with this? And the original author said that she just pours it in to her baking dish like when she goes to bake it off. Uh, and right here I am making the topping, by the way, which is this is all in the recipe. The only thing about this topping, honestly, I wish it was crunchier. I wish it was more like a what would you call that? Like a fruit crisp? Kind of like when you make apple crisp and it's got like oats in it and stuff like that. And it gives it like a little bit of crunch, a little bit of crumble. That's what I was more looking for. This was like a very soft topping. I don't know how else to explain that. Like it never got very hard. And I did end up cooking this for the full amount of time. She says do it for like, I think she said 40 to 60 minutes based on your preference. I'd have to go back and read the recipe again. Again, I'll have it linked down below so you can go through it. I ended up using the entire 60 minutes and it was still very soft and custardy. So I don't know who's doing it at 40 minutes or if their oven just runs super hot. But anyway, <laughs> it's it's a very custardy French toast. It's a very soft French toast. There's definitely like not too much crunch to it. The only crunch I got were from those like brown bits that you can see in my sourdough loaf. And that's because I made the sourdough loaf and it came out like that. Um, I always usually have like a little bit of a browner bottom on my sourdough loaf. Anyways, I did end up just pouring all of the egg mixture in and it was fine. It totally came out fine. It set up perfectly. I just figured why waste it? I'm not going to use it on anything else. And then I topped it up with the topping and just kind of evenly dispersed that as much as I could and threw it into the oven for breakfast this morning. Here's what we're looking like. So the plan is to let this cool fully. We'll actually eat some of this for, for breakfast, um, but then let it cool fully and then I'll cut it into like squares. I'm gonna put them in like freezer bags or individually wrap them. I haven't decided yet, but gonna cut it up and freeze it in individual portions. Oh my goodness, this was such a hit. We ended up eating some of this for breakfast that morning and my kids loved it, which I was very shocked because my oldest says that he does not like eggs. Like he really will not eat anything with eggs in it. And this is basically just a big custardy egg bake. And he loved it. He ate an entire piece by himself and asked for more. We did end up having to use syrup, even though this is pretty sweet and has like sugar already in it. This is how I ended up storing it though, is in a Ziploc bag already labeled with all the instructions and all that. And I kind of just guesstimated on how I'm going to reheat this. And this is a little birdie who was asking me for more. I had some scraps left at the bottom of the pan and she was stoked to get those. <laughs> um, so I'm just cutting them into pieces, like big enough that I could, I don't know, either heat up one for myself or two for me and the kids. And that's it, just freezing it exactly like that. But this comes to the end of our freezer meals video. I hope these ideas were helpful for you. I hope you guys make these. If you do, let me know down in the comments how you like them. And I will see you guys next time, hopefully with a baby. <laughs> we're getting close to the end here, you guys. Thanks for joining me. Bye. <laughs>